Hey everyone, it's Maria and I'm coming to you from a new location. I don't even know how the acoustics will sound in here in my parents' house. Uh, I'm up here for the weekend. It's my mom's birthday tomorrow as well as my niece and nephew's joint birthday party. So I brought the kids up for that. Uh, Aaron unfortunately had to stay and pick his parents up from the airport. So that's kind of a bummer. I miss them. <laughs> um, but anyway, I thought I would take the opportunity to catch up because our life has been a whirlwind the last three weeks or so uh, with, we've been doing swim practice and swim team, summer swim team. I don't know if it's a brilliant idea or not, but all morning long, <laughs> swim team for all the kids or swim lessons. And then in the afternoon I have to feed them and then maybe have a little bit of fun or housework and then swim meets in the evening so it's just been really hard to get any filming done because uh, life has been crazy um, but I'm really enjoying the summer it's been kind of a weird weird start with a couple of un uncertain family things that we're trying to figure out um, but it, it, it's looking positive and and that's good so thank you for sending positive thoughts my way it's been really appreciated Personally, I've been making a lot of changes, which is exciting, I think. I talked to you guys earlier this month about going on reading The 4-Hour Chef by Tim Ferriss. I could be having such a Tim Ferriss file. <laughs> a file? Can you do that with a person's name? Anyway, I just did. I, yeah, Aaron's kind of teasing me a little bit about it because I'm just such a disciple at this point. I love him. Um, but the slow-carb diet is is laid out in the four hour body that I'm reading and I'm really enjoying it. This is week through, well, I did one kind of soft week of it. This is my end of my second hard week of it. And I am thrilled actually with the results. My wedding ring was not fitting and now it fits again, which is so exciting for me. Uh, my clothes are fitting looser. I'm feeling not as drawn to some of the stuff that I previously cannot imagine life without, i.e. mashed potatoes. I love mashed potatoes, but I cannot eat them as much as I can. So basically the slow carb diet, the way it's laid out is there's six very strict days of eating. Uh, no, no dairy, no sugars, no fruit, no uh, white rice, potatoes, etc., cetera, um, pastas, any of that stuff. It's basically proteins, avocado, tomatoes, and vegetables. Like that's pretty much what it is. You can have red wine and you can also have caffeine. Uh, but then on the seventh day, you're really encouraged to just like go for the gold, <laughs> eat all the things. So I did. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm winning at uh, going for the gold. The first, the first week I made like cinnamon rolls and I had four and then I made brownies and I had four. And then I made sweet potato gnocchi with a brown butter um, balsamic glaze sauce. And I ate a lot of those and that was amazing. And then I was like, I have no room for beer even, which is what I had planned on doing. Uh, then the second week we had cheese and chocolate fondue with some of our best friends, as well as a whole bunch of other, I don't know, stuff. <laughs> I did, uh, yeah, some cheese on that one and just really enjoyed the meal, um, cookies all the like beer that week. Um, and then today I'm actually having my third cheat day. Um, so it's like the third week of this. And yeah, I had a burger and I had deep dish pizza cause brought by Chicago and I really love um, the deep dish pizza here. Uh, it makes me happy, but I couldn't even eat as much as I usually can, which was surprising to me. So anyway, I don't know. It's changing my body. It's changing how I think about food. And uh, I really recommend it if you have more weight uh, that you want to lose. I want to probably end up losing probably about 45 pounds from where I am right now. We'll see how that goes. I have no idea. But I haven't had time literally to exercise. I know that sounds I can excuse, but I haven't <laughs> uh, had time to exercise and I'm still losing quite a bit. I think I lost nine pounds so far, maybe a few more pounds than that now. Um, uh, but I'm definitely losing measurements and I keep forgetting to measure, even though he told me to, I, I haven't done that. Anyway, so that's a big thing that's going on. So today again, since it's cheat day, I do, I did want to show you guys, um, sea salt chocolate that I'm planning on binging after this as well as Magner's, uh, 
It's what my parents had. Otherwise, I would have had a beer from my fridge. Anyway, other things that I've really enjoyed lately. I just finished reading this, Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I've Loved by Kate Bowler. Um, sorry about the low lighting. Yeah, hopefully this is okay. This book um, surprised me right now, actually. It's about a woman who has been diagnosed with stage four cancer. She has a two-year-old, one-year-old, I think, when she gets diagnosed, little boy, and a very happy life. She actually did a whole book on the prosperity gospel, if you're familiar with that, which is the notion that I do not uh, believe in, that God gives good things to people who are obedient and ask for them. I, I don't think life is that simple and laid out uh, at all. But I think there are a lot of people who believe that if you do the right things, then you'll have the fancy car and the fancy life and the healthy family. And that's just, I don't think that's true. But anyway, I really love how she talks in this book about uh, being surrounded by people like that and how she learned to live better. Some of the things I really enjoyed in here were was the idea of her really prioritizing what she wanted her relationships to be like and then trying to work through that every single day and just know that every single day everybody's dying uh, and getting one step closer um, to not existing anymore. So make those times count. She put up a sign in her living room that said, you are my bucket list. And I thought that was pretty great. I've been trying to figure out what I wanna do in our bedroom and I might, I might add that in to our, our home decor as well because I just really like that. Anyway, it's a very short book. I read it by the pool. Um, yeah, and I really appreciated it. So that one. The Moon is Down by John Steinbeck. Again, John Steinbeck. I needed, I needed him uh, this month. And I, it's been really hard to do. <laughs> longer books this summer because even though I'm by the pool the whole time the kids keep coming and asking me all kinds of things and wanting me to read them stories and all that which I'm so there for but I was excited to pick this up it's very short it's just one of his novellas it's a World War II novel about a town who is trying to kind of be rebellious on their own and I I underlined several lines in here that I really liked now oh, let's see if I can find them now Oh, this part I really liked. Yes, said the mayor, the one impossible job in the world, the one thing that can't be done, and that is to break man's spirit permanently. And I just um, really adored that, that that uh, as much as one can try, it's that's you can't break the, the human spirit of just getting up and falling and getting up. and. There were several moments in here I underlined about war and about free, being free, and how there's one part in here when they're talking about the difference between uh, freed people and people who are bound to an authoritarian, authoritarian figure and the difference in their mentality and how they can be resilient. And I just really appreciated that. It had some extra depth because of all the things going on around me. <laughs> I needed some resilience and Steinbeck was there for me as usual. Next up is a book that I'm reading because I'm loving his series and this is uh, Kame Bell's The Awkward or The Awkward Thoughts of W. Kame Bell, Tales of a Six Foot Four African American Heterosexual Cisgender Left Leaning Asthmatic Black and Proud Blurred Mama's Boy Dad and Stand Up Comedian. I am really loving his show, United Shades of America. He interviews, I think there's a few seasons out. We watch it through Hulu. Um, he's He's been to Florida to talk to elderly people as well as spring breakers. He's been to talk to immigrants. He's been to prisons to talk to people. And I've just really appreciated not only the humor that he brings, but the the thought provoking questions that he asks and the straight answers he gets from people. He even talked to the, the episode that made me queasy. He talked to a Klansman and actually went to a cross burning, um, which was so scary, like, so s surreal to watch. And he, you know, makes jokes about it or whatever. But um, I feel like now more than 
any other time, it's time to listen to people who are different than us and try and find some common ground. And I love his approach at that. So if you haven't checked out his, um, his show, United Shades of America, and I think he has a couple other ones out, uh, you can pick up this book and it's does kind of some of the some similar things. So he's, he's great. And then I did want to talk about this movie that we watched. It's called get out. Oh my gosh. Um, it was put on by Jordan Peele, I think is the person who kind of put it together. It did win some awards last year. It is kind of like the Stepford wives mixed with race relations if you can imagine that if you've not seen this movie even if you are not a horror film person this movie blew my mind I was so impressed with it so it's another favorite thing that I've just really enjoyed uh, I don't want to give anything away but it starts off where there is a white woman and a black man and they're going to visit her parents and she's not to told them that she's dating a black man and then things happen that are weird and unexplainable. And it's like, yeah, it's kind of like the whole scary movie trope. Like, don't, you, you know something bad's gonna happen, don't do it, but he keeps doing it. And uh, I, I was so blown away by the movie. I really liked it. So there is a little bit of gore, um, but for the most part, it was phenomenal and it will really get you thinking about things. And then finally, I wanted to show you the three picture books that we are loving at our house right now. I actually purchased them for birthday presents for my niece and nephew because they're our favorites right now. So I don't know how many times I've read this one. A lot. King Bid Goods in the Bathtub by Audrey Wood and Dawn Wood. Uh, this is actually a Caldecott Honor award-winning book. I was so surprised by this book. It's just the illustrations are stunning. Uh, it's this it's just silly this king does not want to get out of the bathtub and everybody keeps coming in to get him out and he just says no we're gonna battle in the tub or we're gonna feast in the tub and there's so many little details in here that I keep catching in the illustrations um, but it's just a fun book to read we since have gone back to the library and picked out every other book by this pair it's a married couple that puts together the book so I really recommend it and there's also some adorable YouTube clips online of different classes of like little kids putting on their own interpretations so if that's something you're interested in I think it's a fun one we really liked it next is I don't think I've talked about this before the legend of rock paper scissors pictures by Adam Rex and it's by Drew Daywalt, the same person who did The Day the Crayons Quit. This book just tells the story of how Rock, Paper, Scissors, the game got started. And it was really a fun read. I love that it's there's also a female hero. The Scissors is a female a superhero of sorts. And it's just sweet and fun. And the illustrations are to die for. So another fun one. My nephew is very big on funny books. It's what he needs to get him excited about reading right now. So we we rose to the challenge. And then the, this one I think I've talked about before is the Be Quiet by Ryan T. Higgins. It's by the same person who does the Bruce Bear books. Um, but this one is they're talking about <laughs> doing a book that has no words in it except none of the characters in it want to stick to that so it's very funny it makes you think about structures of books and how yeah how decisions are made about it and i just it's really sweet and the illustrations are funny and we always laugh in this one so anyway those are some things that are going on with me right now yeah a four hour body Definitely a uh, diet is a big thing that takes up my mind swim lessons all the time reading some and just trying to Look at my life and figure out what makes me Feel like myself and what is extra and what what do I need to kind of put away? So I think I'm still sticking with the YouTube channel. So don't get worried about that. I just needed to take a break to re-energize and figure out what I wanted to talk about and what I what, what I'm caring about right now. So those are some of my favorites that are going on right now. Hopefully the sound and picture on here is all right, but I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on. So I will talk to you all later. Bye.